Hey there, this is Yannick for Tutorial CU and this video here has been really requested a lot of times. We will talk about dependency injection in ASP.NET. So let's get started right now so that you see how easy it is to use and how you can make use out of it. And if you are new to our channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so that you no longer miss any high quality programming related content. Let's get started. So I already set up an ASP.NET 6 MVC project that's completely the bare template that already gets provided. And the only thing that I have done is I created a folder and called it services. So why would we even make use of dependency injection? Let's just assume you are developing your ASP.NET program and you come to the point where you want to create a really cool service, something maybe like an email sender or whatever. The question many people really have is how can I make use of this email sender service in every controller for example, so that I can start sending mails from different positions. So before we talk about how you can register and use the service, let's first of all create one right now. So go ahead and add a new C-sharp class to the service folder and let's call it email sender service. Now there are a lot of ways to use dependency injection, but the most common one used is to make use of interfaces. So let's go ahead and create an interface for our email sender service. So let's call this I email sender service and let's simply create a method right there, which is send mail, for example. We can do this with a return type of void. Let's call it send mail, right? We automatically get that adjusted from AI, so that's fine. And now our class email sender service will implement the interface. So let's go ahead with I email sender service. So right now our service is complaining right here because we do not make use of the send email void that we have, so we're not implementing it. Let's go ahead and do that. Hold the cursor right above the service, control dot and we can see implement interface. Let's just go ahead and remove that one and we can here add a simple to do, right? So it's really not about the functional code of how you can send a mail. It's how you can make use of the service and call the send email method from any controller in ASP.NET. All right, let's make a short break right now. Do you have any wishes for programming content? If you want to see some specific topics, go ahead and write it into the comments below because then we really know what you want to see and we can create the tutorial videos for you. We are done with our service right now. Now we need to register it and make use of it. So let's switch to our program.cs. And if you are familiar with ASP.NET 3, then you know that previously there was a startup file and the program.cs file separated, but this got all removed in ASP.NET 6. So right now everything is combined. And if you would like to register a service, so like the one we have just created, you will do that before we call the builder.build, right? So here the application gets built. And before that, we can register services to our container. So let's go ahead and do that. That's called builder.services. And inside of that services collection, we can go ahead and register our service right now. So let's do this as scoped. What it means, I'll talk about that just in a second. And for scoped, we go ahead and say, we want to have that of type interface, right? So let's go ahead and call I email sender service, right? We need to get our namespace reference right here. We can simply do that, importing the services folder or the services namespace. And the type which we are implementing is email sender service. So there we have both configured here, the interface and the implementation, right? Because you can make uh, the interface and then you can create a different class so that you have maybe email sender service two or three, which has maybe some variations different code. So you can say, hey, this interface, this is what I want to use and this implementation, right? So this is how it's working. And add scope here is simply how long the active instance will be available, right? So in this specific term, when you make an HTTP request, this email sender service will get used. And if you just create a new HTTP request, so or maybe our program receives a new HTTP request, there will be a new email sender service. And you can have that with add scoped and for example, add singleton. And for add singleton, it will get shared between the request. So this is just how the instance of the object will get created and used and how long it will be alive. So this is just about lifetime. So what this line of code here is really doing 
it just adds our service to the dependency injection system. Now, this is all we have to do when it comes to registering. Let's take a look on how you can make use out of it. So let's go ahead and switch to one of our controllers. This is just a bare MVC uh, template right here. So let's go to the home controller and let's see what we can do to make use of our service. So you might already know that we use the constructor to get the services from the dependency injection. Right here, it's working with the logger. Let's just get rid out of it. We can remove it. So just like this, or you can even go ahead and remove the constructor because I can show it you really from the scratch. Let's create a constructor. If you're not familiar with it, we can have a shortcut for this. It's called CTOR. So let's go ahead and press tap tap. Now we got public home controller. So the next step is to go inside of the parameters from the constructor and to take the interface. So I email send a service, let's call it service. You can for sure take another name, but that one is nice and short. Now go ahead and create a private read only variable of type I email send a service and let's call it service. So our private read only variable has the underscore, the parameter from the constructor has no underscore. So this is really important. Now let's assign our private variable with the value from the dependency injection so that we can really make use of the service. This is all we have to do. Now inside of our controller we have the service which will get its value or the instance right inside of the constructor when the object gets created, so the home controller object. And now you can see that when we go into the index let's go ahead and call our service dot send email for example hello world. So. As I said, you maybe want to choose a different name. Maybe you can go ahead and say email service or email sender service, but I really want to keep it short. So our service is the email sender service, right? So really take a look at the naming. Let's set a breakpoint in line 20 right here and press on start. And when the application is loaded, our service should have an instance and we should be able to make use out of it. So the dependency injection will have its job done. And as you can see, it already stopped. And when we hold the cursor right above the service, we can see that we have an instance right here. If we would not have, then we would see null. But even before we would see null, we would see an error on our page right here, which would say dependency injection was not able to create the instance for the interface and make use of it inside of the home controller. So yeah, this is how you can make use out of it. If I continue, we for sure get to the page, etc. So everything will be working. So just keep that easy steps in mind. Create an interface create a class which implements the interface, register it as a service inside the program right before you build the application, and then take the service from the constructor or from the dependency injection inside of the constructor and you are already done. And you can for sure do this in every controller. So I can go ahead into another controller and do the same stuff again and just take the email sender service and make use out of it. So this is really how you can create a service and make use out of the dependency injection. So thanks for watching and see you next time. And if you haven't subscribed already, do it now because we deliver you high quality programming content and you really don't want to miss that. So subscribe right now.